Swap some stuff, Olivier. Sure, whatever you need. To try. Just make it. a second and just talk to my uh, business partner on the radio what is it yeah, he's knee deep in the shit nar is after him but that's to be expected if you keep taking from them and giving unto yourself huh i see that kind of business let's not get bogged down with the details just check if he's okay would you he's hiding somewhere near the pripyat port claims that everything is just business, but I know you can tell he's holding back the whole truth, can't you? There's a deep darkness within him, caused by loss and grief. 
Don't let us suck you in. Welcome, welcome. Fancy some trading? Uh, I have to ask. We're in the middle of nowhere. What are you even doing out here? Out here, everything is in the middle of nowhere, my friend. Sometimes, you need to get off the beaten path to find a solid business opportunity. I learned that from Warren Buffett. You've met Warren Buffett? Uh, no. I've watched his motivational videos on YouTube, though. Basically the same thing. I'm... Look at you to work at the pouch you went missing. Uh, I'm sorry. Busy? We've created a new world and like... Good luck. All right. I think I've done... Do you bike? Sure. I think I've... Good luck, Bill. Ha <laughs> ha, thank
Who's there? Don't shoot. Relax. Mikhail sent me. Are you his business associate? His what? Ah, oh, yes. Sure. Sure thing. I've been shot. I need help. Mikhail, I found your friend. NAR did a number on him. It doesn't look good. Fuck! We'll help the man! I need him! He's got connections. Besides, he doesn't deserve to die like that. Like a dog. Let me patch you up. Thank you. I don't have anything on me. I had to drop everything when I ran. But I've got some intel you can have. I'm looking for someone. Her name is Tatiana Amelieva. She, uh... She plays a violin, right? Sibelius. Yes. My god, that's her favorite composer. You... You know her? I can still hear the music. Beautiful. Inspired. Sibelius is not for everyone. Weeks ago, I started having the dreams. Only the music at first. Then I saw her. She didn't say anything, but I understood. She communicated with me through the music. My wife Katya used to play the violin, you see. That was our connection. What did she communicate? Oh, uh... I wrote it down someplace, but it's still in my hideout, probably swarming with NAR goons. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to check your hideout. This is very important to me. You'll be fine, I promise.
this expression, Igor? You're like a foolish child wandering in the dark. You think you're getting closer, but the dark water is rushing in. Soon it will be over your head. You should have stayed away. You cannot ruin everything now. I won't allow it. So, want to show me what you're made of? Now run. I will hurt you if I have to. I'm giving you a ten second head start. People exposed to Chernobylite are able to communicate with each other. That's why people can see Tatiana. That's why I can see her too. So, how is he? Wounded. But he's gonna make it. Oh, that's a relief. He has access to different goods, and a lot of useful contacts. Looking out for your fellow man, eh, McHill? Fuck you, Mr. Righteous. Maybe this is some kind of romantic adventure for you. But some people have to make a living here. We're 
there, my bird? I was just thinking, Mikhail. How did you get to be so knowledgeable about herbs and plants? Why? What's so goddamn strange about that? I never said it was strange. I'm just curious. You created your own compendium. No small undertaking. I studied a lot, you know. You studied botany? At what school? Best fucking school there is. The University of Life. I see. Give me that look. You can trust everything I wrote down to the letter. I've always been into plants and mushrooms. All different kinds. Everything in my compendium has been tested by me personally. So if you've got a problem with any of it, you can stick it where the control rods don't shine. Really? But some of this stuff must be poisonous. Well, I have a strong stomach. But yes, I've had my share of accidents. Luckily for me, my stalker friends were there to save me. Adrenaline and gastric lavage are my bosom companions. Sounds serious. How else would I know what's edible? It's a little something I call the scientific method. You should check it out yourself sometime. Wait, are you a scientist? Ingesting unidentified plants and mushrooms doesn't sound like the scientific method. It sounds like suicide. But I'm here, though, am I not? That means I'm right. Okay, fine. I just hope my stomach is as strong as yours. Mikkel, you've been a- Perhaps a fuck gathering and- Actually, Up for a bit? Yeah, good idea. Is there something you wanted to talk about? Actually, I. Why don't you tell me about yourself? You're from Canada, right? Yeah. My grandfather moved there from Ukraine when that was still an option. I grew up in a military family with military traditions. You might say my upbringing was as straight as the barrel of a gun. It was as much a curse as it was a blessing. No family's perfect, I guess. Our fathers keep tormenting us long after they've passed. Isn't that so? You know what's worse than being raised by a control freak? Being raised by a control freak who's also a former army colonel and a goddamn millionaire. Sounds like you had a lot of expectations to meet. Oh, yeah. But whatever I did, it was never good enough. Not even after I made it into JTF-2. The top of the top. An elite unit of the Canadian Army. I wouldn't give up. I was relentless. I was eventually promoted to my own command, and then disaster struck. We were ambushed near Raqqa in Syria, and everyone was shot to pieces, except me. Every day, I think if only I could go back and change what happened. I'm sorry, Olivier. That must have been hard. It still is. I never went home afterwards. Everyone thinks I'm KIA. I'd rather be a dead hero back in Canada than a living failure. Well, that's quite a story. I know you'll find a way to deal with your past, Olivier. You're strong enough. Do you think you could find some time? <laughs> no, but I'll be happy to... Perfect. Let's do it. Follow me.
Now that we've covered the basics, it's time to introduce some more advanced techniques. I'm going to teach you how to shoot from cover. Don't hug your cover. Keep it at arm's length, or you won't be able to see your target. Remember to stay in cover as much as you can. Pick your target and squeeze the trigger gently. Don't rush. Okay, Igor? Ready? Go! Nicely done! Keep practicing and you'll be the terror of the zone in no time. Keep at it. Turn yourself into a dangerous bastard so you can protect others. Ariadna, my life's work. Still a prototype, but it will recreate any event from the past if you feed it the right data. <laughs> Glad I didn't let those Brits destroy it. It will help me find Tatiana. Just like in the myth of Tessius, Ariadna's thread will lead me to the truth, hopefully. Yes, comrade. 
We think that this subject could be the key. Patient Zero. Yes. She was pregnant. Only a couple of weeks. Yes, we were surprised too. No, she won't tell us who the father is. Based on the intel that our friends in the KGB provided us with, we've got two possible candidates. Unfortunately, one of them is already dead. Absolutely, comrade. We've taken every precaution to make sure that Amelieva and her child are safe and sound. We're very curious, too. We could be on the brink of something big here. Yes, I will keep you posted. Dear God, Tanya? She... she was with child? Our child? And she was this patient zero. They were using her for their experiments from the start. My little bird, my little sweetheart. Soon you will see the blue sky, the meadows. You will hear the sound of the ocean, smell the pine trees, feel the sunlight on your face. You're a very special boy. You have a bright future ahead of you. I want you to go far, far away from here and be happy. Don't be afraid. I will always be close to you. In your heart, in your deepest memories, find me there. It's time. We have to hurry. I love you, my sweetheart. Your mommy loves you very, very much. Now go. Tanya was kept prisoner here. And her child, did someone take it away from her? Yes, this is regrettable. My men are looking into it. Regrettable? It's a fucking disaster. How could you let this happen? If someone finds out... Mind your tone, comrade. I was fighting in Afghanistan when you were still pissing in your underwear. Now the boy suffered from acute autism. Couldn't even speak. My bet is, he's probably lying in a ditch somewhere. However, he couldn't have escaped on his own. Someone helped him. Are you saying it was an inside job? It's too soon for definite conclusions, but yes, I would say so. So, it must be a spy, a CIA asset. You KG people see spies everywhere. That probably explains why your arrest records are so high. Saddam is on the brink of invading Kuwait. I'm sure the CIA has more pressing problems than your research. No, this is not the CIA. This is someone closer to home. Don't worry. I intend to find out who. Look, General, I'm sorry I spoke out of turn before. I really do appreciate your work. You are vital to our efforts. The Duga project and our research, it could be bigger than nuclear weapons, bigger than even the space wars.
A lot is at stake here, even the future of the motherland. I already spoke with some of the party members, and... Let me be frank with you, comrade. The Soviet Union is falling apart at the seams, and I don't think anything can prevent that from happening. I'm not a scientist, but I've seen enough to know that this... Chernobylite, on the other hand, could be the key to our future. We all have to do whatever's necessary to prepare for it. So, Tanya had a boy, and he escaped. Was it mine? God, if it was, I can't. Ah, oh, compose yourself, Igor. Looks like the KGB was trying to expedite the Chernobylite experiments. Maybe they were even hoping that the findings would prolong the life of the Soviet Union. Clearly, they didn't succeed. I live in the village in Red Forest. I've heard about you. I think we can help each other. <laughs> I hear that a lot lately. I'm afraid you need to be more specific. Your distrust is understandable under the circumstances, but we have the same goal. Drive NER out of the zone. Well, I didn't come here to conduct a guerrilla war on corporate mercenaries. Yes, I know. You're looking for someone. So am I. Please come to our village in Red Forest so we can talk in person. Be extra careful on the way here, okay? The monsters, they mostly come out at night. Mostly. If there's a village, does that mean you're one of the summer shells? The people who returned to their homes after the disaster? Some of the older ones never left. I know it's hard to believe. And there are newcomers like me. We came to the zone for many different reasons, but now we're united by one common goal, to get rid of NAR. I see. Fascinating. Please come to the village. This isn't just about me. You'd be doing the right thing as well. I'll make sure to stop by if I get the chance. Let's do this. Let's get cracking, Professor Fancy Pants! What is this? It can't be real. No! 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 Igor, it's not the end. I won't let it end like this. Go. Die. Fade. Portal. Help. Die. Igor. Time. What is time, Igor? Is it a straight line? An arrow fired at the dawn of creation, moving steadily towards infinity? A universal constant that cannot be altered?
Or is it something much more? A fourth dimension that can change? Slowing down, something that can take the form of cosmic strings, infinite, full of mass and energy, bending reality and space, going on forever? You arrived at your base wounded and scarred, but you didn't know the correct password for Olivier. Go ahead, Igor. Change the past. Hands where I can see them. What's the password? Nostalgia. We don't have time for games, Olivier. Can't you tell it's me? You picked the password. Let's just stick to the rules, shall we? Come on in. And if you could change any of your decisions, Would it be like going back in time? Or would it create an alternate universe? This is your chance to rethink the decisions you've made. A chance to reshape the fabric of space-time reality. A chance to alter your timeline. We can be together, Igor. But you have to learn the truth if you truly want to find me. These events have not happened yet, as the future is not predetermined. Come back later, Igor. These events have not happened yet, as the future is not predetermined. Come back later, Igor. These events have not happened yet, as the future. These events have not happened. These events have. These events have not... Mikhail wanted you to wipe out the NAR servers, but you chose to look for more information about me instead. You saved Mikhail from poisonous gas. When you asked him, he gladly joined your team. These events have... Mikhail asked you to save his wounded business partner, and you managed to do it. He is now alive. These events have not... You reached the supplies, but someone else got there first. You killed him and took the food for yourself. Don't worry about it now, Igor, but know that it can still happen in the future. Remember that, and be prepared. You reached the supplies, but someone else got there first.
Hello? Professor Kimanuk? Igor? Are you there? Answer if you can hear- Hello? Yes? The name is Ogum. <laughs> I hear that a lot lately. I'm afraid you need- You're distraught. Well, I didn't- Yes, let me extra care- Who are you really? Some bushwhacking partisan? I'm Oga. Me and my father, Matt Vey, take care of the refugees and Samuel shells from the zone. That's all you need to know, for now. Please come to the village. This isn't just about me. You'd be doing the right thing as well. I'll make sure to stop by if I get the chance. All right, Igor, what's next? So, what's the fucking plan, man? This woman, Olga, she seems to be running the show. Must be tough as nails. And all these Samo shields? They say it takes a village to raise a child, but how many does it take to find a lost love?
I don't know you. What do you want? I'm Igor. Olga sent for me. Olga, some Igor jackass here to see you. You know this guy, or should I shoot him in the throat? It's fine. Open the gate, Marco. Hey, hey! Heard you're one of the crew running around giving NAO the squirts. How many of them have you killed already? Never heard of them. Sounds like another urban legend. Urban what now? We're in a goddamn forest, my man. Anyway, I hope someone helps us eventually, and NAR will leave this place for good. Professor Kimanuk, I presume? It's an honor to finally meet you in person. We've got a lot of work to do, you and I. I'm here. What did you want to talk about? A few days ago, someone took our supplies. My husband, Kostia, went after the thieves. Now he's gone too. In the meantime, some NAR henchmen showed up claiming they have a prisoner they want to trade for something of value. And you think it's your Kostya? The description matches. I'd make the trade in a heartbeat, but as you can see, we don't really have anything to exchange for my husband. This place you're running, it's really something. I'd never expect to find... What? Regular folks living in the middle of the zone? You're right. We're anything but regular. We're hunters. We know these woods better than the trees know the rain. What about you? You're too young to... To what? Remember the Chernobyl disaster? You're right. I came with my mom from Minsk after my dad died. I was a teenager then. She was a doctor who wanted to help the radiation victims in the zone. She met Matt Vey here and, well, they took a liking to each other. Then NAR arrived and came down on us hard. Fucking fascists. My mom disappeared. Now some years ago now. Matve took care of me after that, taught me everything I know. In Minsk, I was just an emo girl. Here, I'm the goddamn queen of the forest. Kostya came here two years ago with Doctors Without Borders. He stayed because of me, but yeah, the rest is really none of your business. All right. I can see you're really looking out for your people. I appreciate that. I'll help if I can. I promise you won't regret it. For our friends, we serve fine vodka. For our enemies, we have shotguns. One more thing, these assholes who took Kostya, I'm pretty sure they have our supplies too. You want me to keep an eye out for the supplies too, huh? If you don't mind, but my old man comes first, obviously. Sure, sure, I live to serve. Do I look like the chatty type? Talk to the woman in charge. Those fuckers took our food. And you know what they say. Well, what do they say? Every civilization is only three meals away from total anarchy. I think Lenin said that. Yeah, John Lennon, smart guy. I am the walrus. Goo 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 You want to see Matve? Get in line. Everyone has to wait their turn. We're not barbarians here. We've got rules. What line? We're the only ones here. <laughs> Are you getting cheeky with me? I know you're kind. Rule breakers. First you're cutting the line, then total anarchy follows. Not on my watch. Now wait your turn. Beat it! I know I don't look busy, so what? Get lost.
we run into some rabid dogs. I've always wanted to shoot a dog. <laughs> Let's hope we don't end up like him. Like who? You know, like our Samosio friend. That Costa guy in Capachi. What a total shit show that was. Manhunt and everything. That asshole Maxim has a big mouth. It's a damn good thing we didn't get caught trading on the side. There's one thing I still don't understand. He said they sent him to hide the supplies in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> Why? Who knows? These people are bonkers. They've lived out here for years, swallowing radiation for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Must have messed with their brains. Anyway, we're in a good bargain, bargain, bargaining position, right? There must be more where that came from. Right on. I know a guy we can sell to as well. Or maybe we can even sell it back to those fuckers.
Wait a minute. Kopachi? Kostya? Shit. The guy the NAR was looking for. The guy I killed was Olga's husband? Fuck. What am I going to do now? Should I come clean? Who's there? Why are you loitering here? Easy. I'm just looking for some parts. What? Speak louder. I'm looking for some parts. Stop yelling. It's not safe here. Why isn't it safe? What kind of question is that? NKVD, of course. NKVD? The secret Soviet police? These bastards came around here snooping. They arrested my sister-in-law for being a kulak. And she only has two cows. Two fucking cows, goddammit. The NKVD doesn't exist anymore. You don't need to worry about them. Yes, yes. Yeshov is a piece of shit. His goons are persecuting everyone. Even decorated war heroes like myself. Duh. Oh my. What? You've got to speak louder, lad. My hearing is not so good anymore after some fritz threw a grenade into my bunker. Uh, do... do you have anything to trade? Perhaps some parts? Why didn't you ask sooner? Of course I do. I'll trade you junk for some bullets. I need to arm myself in case the NKVD comes back. I'd like to exchange a bullet for some scrap. Did you find anything? Take a look, sir. See you later.
I detected the echo of a recent wormhole. It should lead me to it. Why did you have to come back? I'm full of surprises, but it's not a real. I retrieved your supplies. That's fantastic. What about the thieves? Just some NAR bastards trying to earn something on the side. They won't bother you anymore. Good riddance. Nobody will shed a tear for those parasites. You came through, Igor. You're a man of your word. One more thing. Kostya never made it back to the camp. If you happen to run into him, tell him to hurry. We need him. I need him. I have no fucking idea what you think you're going to accomplish by telling her the truth, but yeah, go for it. I can't fucking wait to hear her reaction. Yes, I saw him a while back. I met him in Kopachi, and we had an argument. He wouldn't tell me who he was, and I... He's dead. I'm so sorry. I didn't want it to go that way. One thing just led to another, and I had to, though. You understand, right? I couldn't risk him jeopardizing my efforts to find Tatiana. What did you just say? Olga, please, no shooting in the village. That rule was your own idea. And besides, this isn't how we solve problems. Wrong. This is exactly how I solve this kind of problem. And you, you fucker, this isn't over yet. You got that? So you better watch yourself. I will never forget what you've done. Hello. Hey, you seem preoccupied. I've been thinking about the nuclear disasters in the West. They never got as much coverage in the press as Chernobyl. Not anything like it. Isn't that odd? I think the Americans just wanted to distract the world from what was going on in their own nuclear backyard. Interesting. Some might call it a conspiracy theory, but 
Do you think Chernobylite has already been discovered someplace else? I really don't know. But if nuclear fusion is the key, then we should probably expect it to appear in other places. Hanford, Windscale, Boucher, Fukushima. There are about 450 operational nuclear reactors in the world right now. Yeah. Something to think about, eh? But let's focus on what's in front of us. One problem at a time, Professor. Right. a second, Igor? Sure. What can I do for you? I was just thinking about my friends. Zina, Yuri, Ludmila, and Igor, your namesake. They were the best fucking guys and gals I've ever known. When I first arrived, I was lost, just stumbling around in the dark like an idiot. They took me in and we became inseparable. The greatest team of stalkers the world has ever seen, will ever see. They called us the Pripyat Five. It was a stupid-ass joke, of course, but I still liked it. Zeno was the smart one. Whatever the problem, she always had a solution in her back pocket. She could get us out of every kind of goddamn mess. Yuri was the strongest guy ever. He was our shield. It was like he was carved from wood. Igor was the leader. But really, he was like the older brother I never had. And then there was Ludmila, the party girl. We did so many drugs together, I had a bit of a crush on her, and I think it was mutual. Shit. I'm really sorry, Mikhail. Everything reminds me of them. This place. We built it together. Carried all this shit on our backs, like fucking ants. I never worked so hard in my life. It was supposed to be our post-apocalyptic hive. The Pripyat fucking five in the hive. My homies. My home. I'm really sorry, Mikhail. I hope you can at least find some closure here. Mikhail, you've been around. Perhaps of gathering and. Actually.
Rise and shine, Igor. Tatiana? There are things you need to face. Find me in Pripyat. Tatiana? <laughs> She's gone. Again. What's our next move, boss? Are we doing something or not? Remember when we first arrived in this city of the Chosen Ones? Semenov so badly wanted you on his team. You were handpicked from Leningrad Polytechnic. You and Boris. And you, Tanya. Please, stop lying to yourself. I was only invited here because of you. This was your adventure all along. You were the hero who was supposed to make a difference. We both wanted this. You wanted this. But have you ever asked what I wanted? Tanya, please. Everything I've done, everything I planned, it was all for us. This was supposed to be our future. Future? Let me show you the future.
This was supposed to be the future of the Soviet Union, a true atomic city, a place for the elite, scientists, engineers, artists, where everyone would be taken care of, where they all had a purpose and no one would want for anything. No poverty, no crime, no injustice, no inequality. But in the end, it was nothing but a glorified internment camp, infested with KGB goons sniffing around in other people's business. And when the Chernobyl disaster struck, they naturally looked after themselves first. Look at it now. A high-tech mausoleum full of ghosts. A utopia unraveled. What happened, Igor? The same thing that always happens. People. They just... they're irrational. No matter how much they have, they can't be satisfied. Always need to fuck something up. Create chaos. To me, this city was remarkable, regardless of the outcome. What was so special about it? Us. My sweet Professor Kimunik. Come with me. I'll show you some happy memories now.
found something. playing tricks on me.
Show yourself. the breeze off the Pripyat River. Flowers in bloom, coffee brewing, lemonade. We ate dessert and read together in the grass. Yes, you always brought science fiction. What was the name of that author you liked? <laughs> the Strugatsky brothers or Bulichov? Sometimes it felt like having a third person at the table. <laughs> that was fun. Do you remember the roar of the hydroplanes cruising to Kiev? You used to take me there. It was a long time ago, but yes, I think so. Come winter, we'd go skating on the river, just like my childhood in Murmansk. You used to move so fast, like a torpedo, spooking those poor fishermen sitting by their holes in the ice. And I was such a horrible skater. <laughs> you were the worst. But you had me. I would always hold your hand and keep you from falling. I wish you were doing that right now. I need you, Tanya, so badly. I know.
stay in the shadows. Become invisible. None of you are safe. What's going on, Igor? Professor k -Dog. Good day, Mikhail. Ever heard of Kasparovsky? Actually, yes. I was already living in the UK when he became famous. When I was just a little shit, my auntie took me to Slavitich to see him. That's only 50 kilometers from Chernobyl. He came to perform psychic healing sessions for the liquidators. <laughs> psychic healing my ass. Why do you have to be like that, Igor? Why don't you try opening your mind? Just crack that solid steel skull of yours the tiniest bit and let the possibility of a miracle in. It's just not my cup of tea. I deal with cold, hard facts. Everything else is fantasy, or at best speculation. But there are alternate worldviews and scientific theories, no? No, there aren't. Unless you can prove something using the scientific method, it's no more than someone's opinion. But maybe different scientific worldviews can somehow coexist. It's all in our minds, after all. Perhaps the Earth can be like a ball and like a pancake at the same time. Earth is not a ball. It's a fucking oblate spheroid. See? You're already coming up with alternate theories. Fuck it, eh? It's not an alternate theory. I knew I could expand your worldview. I'm glad to have you as my friendo, my friendo Igoro. But enough chit chat. We got shit to do. Sure. Whatever you say. Mikkel. Caps of gathering and. Actually.
Get up, Professor Kuminik. Time is of the essence. <laughs> what? Meet me in Lenin Square. Let's make it happen. What's the skinny, partner? 